there, I'm just sharing a layout of a 12x12 traditional layout today. That's for a challenge over at the Scrappery in um, for National Scrapbooking Day or International Scrapbooking Day as we're calling it. Renee over at the Scrappery has um, nominated me on the vlog post on YouTube and um, I've taken up the challenge. So here I am. So um, what I'm starting, well, I should tell you what the challenge is, is to do a layout incorporating mint, gold, stencil, paint and stars. So I've got all those things in my stash. So I went through my stash and picked out what I thought would work. I start with a stencil, a small um, stencil here you can see with little hearts. Um, and I actually mixed my mint coloured paint from Martha Stewart in with some uh, texture paste. And I've mixed that in a little um, plastic palette there beforehand and I'm just spreading that on to my layout over the stencil. Now normally I would put gesso um, on the background on the cardstock but I didn't this time. Um, I think if you're not too heavy handed with sprays and getting everything too wet you can get away with just you know using your application of paint and or texture paste but what it does mean is if you get marks um, on your layout that you don't want to be there it's not as easy to remove them. If you've got a gesso base you can actually use a wipe and wipe the bits you don't want off so that's an advantage so I'm just cleaning up here after um, using the stencil try and clean up straight away that way it's uh, you know doesn't have a chance to set on your stencil drying it off here with a heat gun this particular um, texture paste that I'm using actually sort of puffs up quite a bit so just be careful we you know when you're heating it there um, but, you know, I haven't got too much on the page either, so it dries pretty quickly. So you should check out the Scrappery uh, YouTube channel if you don't already follow them. And Facebook page. I will put some links at the bottom of my video. I love um, looking at their, all of the creative team for the Scrappery videos. Um, I think they're really fantastic girls and good fun and a good laugh to listen to. So when I had to pull out things to go for this challenge, I went through my stash and looked at things I haven't used that I bought recently. Um, this Heidi Swap paper I love and I hadn't even used it yet, which is pretty bad. It's the planner paper, um, but I, I didn't buy the planner, just the goodies. So I want to use this paper today. And it's got some mint greens and some florals and things so that match as well with the mint green paint and the photos I've chosen, which is just three little photos of some roses in my garden. So I'm flicking through the pad here trying to think of what else I might like to use. The papers I'd chosen initially weren't exactly matching. Um, I generally pull off quite a few bits of paper out of the, if I use a pad, um, this is a 6 by 8 pad in this case, to ahead of time to sort of plan what I'll use but it doesn't always work out so just, you know have the pad close to hand and grab a few more bits out as need be. So I'm just working out the orientation because the photos are small that I've got and it's a you know a large 12 by 12 layout. So I'm thinking about which colours, which orientation, having a bit of a play around. I've left this in the video because I want you to see the real process that you know I go through to get to the end result. It doesn't always come naturally or quickly or you know, so it's important to capture that stuff. So I'm still playing around with the different prints and patterns and different pink shades of pink and greens to see what I'm happy with. I probably could have cut this uh, white cardstock down to 8.5 by 11 and I probably would have found that that rectangular shape would have done, you know, better with the small photos that I've used. But in the end, I'm happy with how it comes out, so... So I'm just trimming down some of the, um, I just designed a measurement, it's a rectangular, it's about 12 centimetre measurement to start with, so it's not the full piece of paper, and I just decide that's what I'll start mounting with, so I've cut, cutting all my papers there, roughly or the same sort of size, and I can start creating my layers. So I'm looking at the placement of my photos. I realise that when I've got the photos out that two photos are actually the same, um, which wouldn't really worry me, but if I need to use four, I would have used the other one, but, yeah, I end up just using the three. I've also pulled some vellum out of my stash, and you'll see me use that. 
Um, gold's easy for me to use, mint green, fairly easy in papers. A bit harder with the paint background. It was found that it was a bit of a struggle um, to use that particular colour, not the actual fact that I use paint. Um, yeah, gold, easy. Paint, texture, oh, sorry, stencils, easy. The thing I probably found the hardest was the stars. I love stars um, and I do use stars, but probably not in this type of layout. Um, I am more definitely a more heart heart sort of background or florals and things whereas stars I do do um I do do I do use but generally not with flowers and hearts as well no real reason just don't think it generally all goes all together but again made it work and it's a layout, layout done so that's what's important so trying to keep it all in shot here for you sorry sometimes I move out of shot can be hard when you can't see um my phone, which I use for my camera, is filming above me, so I can't always see a view of what I'm, I'm doing, but I do try and keep it in shot where possible. I've run out of little mini tape runners, so I've had to use my ATG, which is fine for um, big layouts, but sometimes I find when doing full small photos and things, it can be a little bit annoying. It's a bit too big and cumbersome for the little, little area. Just make it work. So I'm filling around with the different papers finding out where I want them to go and just start sticking them down and layering them. Try not to think about it too much but you'll see that I do a bit of rearranging and moving at times. But I have got that, that um, layer of vellum in between the first two layers there just to soften it all. Vellum is something I probably use in, in nearly every layout including a lot in Project Life now too. I just think it really adds another beautiful layer and dimension so simply and I really like it so more pink more green sometimes the recording goes so fast that I don't have time to uh, <laughs> get everything I want to say out but at the moment I'm just layering and layering so playing around with the layers so yeah, there's not that much to talk about at the moment you know another option would have been to cut this page down by an inch on two sides and then layer it on another background piece but I decide just to keep it you know a crisp white background and then at the end I do use a black marker to outline the edges if I wasn't so lazy I'd get out my sewing machine and, and make a sewing edge but I am too lazy to get my sewing machine out <laughs> it's only it is in my scrap room but it's not always set up so that's a challenge in itself so I'm just going through some gold vellum um, that I pulled out earlier to see which one suitable and I'll go with the polka dots pretty happy with that Then when I was doing the layering you would have seen that some of the papers I actually cut down um, like I'm doing with the vellum sorry it's out of shot but you can what I do is I cut sort of an outer frame so the guts for one of, want of a better word I cut out and did that with quite a few of the papers it just means that you're not wasting them um, on the layers they're unnecessarily all underneath and you'll, then means I can use those pieces to add back in um, either later on or for another layout. Each time I'm turning the layers over and putting more adhesive on, you'll see what I mean by that. But you'll see, yeah, I'll just sort of create an L shape um, with the paper so that I'm just giving the impression or the look that it's an entire piece behind it when there in fact isn't. I know I can see that I want something on this other side. I feel like it's heavy everywhere else, but just need something more on this side. And then I decide that this floral would go well, so I trim that down. Just showing you that little remote. Um, it seems a bit random. It looks like a garage remote, but I ended up getting a phone call during the video um, when I was filming, so I had to stop and and um, turn it off and go again. But I got that little remote online I think it was around twenty dollars and I love it. It means that I don't have to get up and lean over the top of the frame of my camera to turn it on and off. It just means that remote Bluetooth um, wirelessly to my phone and I can just press stop and start. So yeah great little investment and I, I love technology so that was really fun. It just means I can press that. So I'm sure that's very exciting that I shared that with you but <laughs> yeah just I guess a lot of work does going to process videos as anyone who knows who does them knows 
it's the filming part itself's easy but then that's the editing and the voiceover and the hardest part is the uploading to YouTube because it just takes so long so if you are enjoying my videos I would love for you to like and subscribe um, if you leave me a comment that'd be fantastic too I do try and reply to all comments and um, let me know what sort of videos you want to see I'll try and mix it up with traditional project life and um, you know incorporating some mixed media but as I say it, the biggest challenge is actually getting time to upload them so once I put that floral piece on the right I decide that it needs some more on, on the left to balance it out so I get another bit of floral and I'm just fighting with it endlessly just deciding where I want it to go the adhesive in the scotch uh, 3m ATG is quite forgiving so generally you know not long after you've put it down you can move it a little bit so so you can see me sort of lifting layers and tucking that bit of floral paper in to just decide where I want it to go because that happens sometimes you know sometimes it works perfectly and other times it just doesn't so you've got to go with it and just you know keep playing around with it to get what you like I think a lot of scrapbooking for me is just about what looks good to my eye. Um, you know, it's not about following rules, but just what is pleasing to the eye. That's generally what I go with. What feels right, what looks right. So you can see here again, I'm just cutting out the centre piece of that paper and left with a little L shape. And I'm going to tuck that in. The gold on that vellum, I love those dots. They're quite bold, but I think you get away with it because they're not, they're sort of just peeking out there. It's not um, too in your face. I think that's, I can't remember if I put another layer behind or not. I guess we'll find out in a minute. That bit more gold vellum. The trouble is when you layer like this on angles, um, you can just keep going and going until you get it all balanced out. Eventually I'll decide it's enough. This little creative memories trimmer, I've had it for probably oh, 15 years and I love it. I absolutely love it to pieces. It's my favourite uh, scrapbooking tool. I don't think they make them anymore. Well, creative memories doesn't exist anymore, but um, that is the thing that by far my favourite and has lasted forever and it just is perfect for trimming photos. I wouldn't be without it. I do use a 12 by 12 trimmer for larger pieces but you'll see mostly when the videos I use a little cropper because it's just easier to use in the space that I'm working in. So it looks like I decided I need another backing piece just to bring it all together. Go on with another L. Look and you don't have to cut the guts out of those bits of paper if you're not really worried about using your paper. You know, you get two pieces of each one in this pad, so if it, if it didn't worry you, then don't bother, but I just think it's a good little technique to share to show you how to get the most out of your, your paper. So I've put some foam tape on the back, and I fight with this a couple times too, because I ideally would be standing up above it to look where I want the placement, but because I'm filming, I don't want to be standing up and get my big head in the way so I fiddle around a bit till I get it straight and ha I'm happy with it <laughs> still moving it yep happy maybe finally so that's all down now I'm thinking about what else I want to do so I'm not quite happy with that above the photos there's a fairly big um, negative space empty space there so I am um, will do something that there looking at my chipboard thinking can I make that work hmm. pull up my gold thickers I love these thickers I've still got plenty left I have used quite a few too though but the gold glitter thickers doesn't get much better than that so decide that I'll use the word document it's fairly general non-specific so I'm happy with that and I was just looking for a little bit of um, baking paper or grease proof paper I usually use that to place the word thickers on alpha so that I can decide placement but I didn't seem to have any handy so I just used the acetate the, the packaging I should say from the um, thickers place the word on top of it just to 
to be able to see through it and see where I want to put the words. So I'm happy with that. Pop it down there. That little corner is just sticking up and it keeps bothering me. So you'll see me a few times get into that and stick that down. For my stars, I decided that I'm going to use this little bit of washi tape, which is a thin washi from Freckled Fawn. It was in the Christmas kit and it's got gold stars all over it. So I'm not sure if I'll use any other stars in the end of my layout, but I sort of cheated and thought, well, I'm going to use that because I think that finishes off the bottom under the title and it's got gold stars. So it doesn't get rid of that. So Teresa Collins' little label pack, just cute little... Um, gold and mint green labels. So I'll pop one of those on. So I'm just embellishing at this stage, thinking about what I want to put on. I don't want to overdo it. The photos, you know, speak for themselves and are pretty with the flowers. So you don't want to, I don't want to detract from them too much, but I'm just putting a few things on, trying a few things. I love these Heidi Swap planner stickers. They're sort of a see through sticker. Really pretty. I'm trying to put that XOXO on, it doesn't make it to the page I don't think, but it's silver and I keep trying to make it work, but no. Try a flower, try a heart, and finally stick something down. Okay, thinking about what else I need to put on. corner, just a little flag, a little banner, a sweet flower to continue the theme. This is the sort of pack of stickers that I would normally just keep in my stash and not use because they're just too beautiful and I just want to look at them. I don't want to use them but I'm learning very slowly that you know what, leaving it in my stash, what for? Having it on the layout, you know, I'll have it in my album when I get to look at it. These little Heidi Swap label stickers. I think they're from the Wanderlust collection, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure. But I, they're gorgeous as well, love them. I love any la label stickers, particularly if they're gold. So I'm just um, doing a little bit of journaling on that, just saying roses from our garden in April 2015. I'm pretty sure that's when I took the photos. Just did that with the Sharpie. I was just pressing on top of that sticker there just to gently press it down without smudging it. So I'm just going to add a few more embellishments here. I put a little gold geotag um, mainly because I put from our garden so it's about the location so I was happy to put that there. A little gold dot from those Heidi swap stickers. They're like chipboard stickers those ones. So here you are going with a sharpie and do the pen, add a pen line. A couple of years ago this is something I would never would have done because I just don't like messy stuff. But a page like this where it's crisp and white, you really need to have that on the outline just to bring it all together to finish it off, you know, it really needs it, so. Just doing some more edging. Okay. So it's starting to come together. Getting all bits and pieces. I think I'm cleaning up because I'm going to make some mess. <laughs> I think I'm thinking about getting some ink out, so I'm starting to move things over. Move that arrow that I previously stuck down on the bottom left corner. Decide that needs to go up the top and put something bigger. I'm trying to put this heart on. I realise that the sticky hasn't come off on this heart. It's supposed to be adhesive, but it's obviously a chipboard heart and it's peeled off. And that chipboard arrow, we'll stick that on there, the bigger, that's a bit bigger. Playing around, will I pop another star on, will I put a heart on? Get some adhesive. Some glue and just dab that on the back of that chipboard heart, seeing as the um, adhesive didn't come off with it. Decide that, quite big but quite happy with that, sort of matches in with the gold dots on the vellum, happy with it. Couple little more random little gold circles, dots for want of a better word. Because you can never have too much gold <laughs> instead of using enamel dots, which I normally do. But I'll just use those in the chipboard. 
So here I'm just ripping up some paper just to cover my photo, my title, anything on my page that I don't want ink spots to go on because it would really, um, yeah, I don't want to get ink on something. Sorry, that was a little bit of a wobble. I bumped the frame um, when I was getting my indie ink out. Paintbrush, dipping it in. No, it's not enough on there. Come on. Tap, tap. Got some ink splatters. Love the effect of ink splatters, particularly when they work. <laughs> when they're messy and they don't work, <laughs> then I don't like them so much. But just moving my title over. Sorry, not moving my title, the cover of my title wasn't deciding where I want the splatters to go. And then I'm looking at it, making sure I'm happy with it. The top left corner, once I'm watching back the filming, um, I realise that something's missing on that top in the stills that I add actually um, some a little bit of embellishment, just a little gold triangle to the um, top left corner because it just needs something on that left corner to balance it out. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it and love you to like and subscribe. Bye.